Hello everyone, uh, welcome you all again to the channel Techno Tutorial. <coughs> Today I am going to start one another unit for you. For here see we have already discussed that is uh, computer system organization that means the first unit already we have finished okay so now today we are going to start uh, the next unit that is unit 2 computational thinking and programming 1 okay here you will get introduction to problem solving problem solving cycle analyzing a problem designing algorithm and uh, representation of algorithm using flowchart and pseudocode decomposition so uh, then after you will get familiarization with the basic of python programming a simple hello world program so these things you will get so so many contents are there in this second unit see so many contents are there so we will discuss in this video up to this there is familiarization with the basic python programming some basic python programs i will show you and these some basic theories are there so i will i have prepared one ppt for you from the ppt you can see everything or you can after uh, i will send you the ppt and some basic programs what i am going to show you today all these thing i will send you on mail so you can directly download at home and you just keep all these thing in a sequential manner so that you can easily access at any time okay so you have to uh, understand everything so these basic programming parts you are you have to clear anyhow okay so if your basic programming is not clear then you cannot do the further programs that is why you have to clear the concept okay if you have any doubt then you can ask me in uh, whatsapp group so now see uh, for the second unit i have prepared this ppt for you okay okay ppt in the ending computational thinking and programming one so here in this ppt problem problem solving cycle or problem solving process just steps i have written here so all the steps you can read at home directly download the ppt and read at home you will understand everything just i am going to show you just ppt what is there so here see in problem solving cycle that means problem solving process that means when you are going to write a program when you are going to solve a program so what to do and what the steps you have to follow internally so everything uh, uh, it is written here in the problem uh, it is uh, showing here as problem solving process so here in this process you will get problem definition problem analysis generating possible solutions analyzing solutions selecting the best solution implementing the solution evaluation and revision so these are the points so about these points about problem definition i have written here problem analysis i have written here all these steps you just go through it you just read it and you will understand everything so I'm directly going to show you the basic programs. So how to start programming. So these steps you just read for your theory purpose. Okay. So these steps are there. Uh, after that algorithm that you have to know what about the algorithm. See uh, the problem or the program when you're going to write the program step by step you can define. Okay. So algorithm you can say that and, and without writing the entire program the step by step definition of a solving uh, definition of the solving of a problem is known as algorithm you can say okay and no need to write the entire program only the steps so what you are doing you are inputting you are processing you are get, giving the output okay the main parts what you are doing so that thing only you have to write so that is about algorithm i have written the examples also i am going to show you here see in the computer science in uh, is a finished sequence of well defined computer uh, implementable inst uh, instruction typically to solve a class of problem or to perform a computation algorithm are ways unambiguous and are uh, always unambiguous and are used as specifications for performing calculations data processing automated reasoning and other tasks okay as an effective method an algorithm can be expressed within a finite amount of space and time and uh, in a well-defined formal language for calculating function so about algorithm just you have to know that this is the step-by-step -step definition of the solving of uh, of a problem okay so here designing algorithm means see algorithm design refers to a method for problem solving and engineering algorithm the design 
of algorithm is part of many solution theories of operating research as such as dynamic programming. Techniques for designing and implementing algorithm designs are also called algorithm design patterns. So this thing you have to know that typical steps in the development of algorithms is C, problem definition. You have to define a problem, development of a model, specification of the algorithm, designing an algorithm, checking the uh, correctness of the algorithm, analysis of algorithm, implementation of algorithm, pro program testing, documentation, pre preparation. So these are the steps that these are the theory purpose that you have to know uh, what are the steps. Okay, so directly I'm going to show you one examples. I one example of algorithm. See here, see a given number n, your condition to test whether n is even. If n mod to equal equal to zero, n is even. So that is the condition. So that means the, what you are doing here, you are going to check your entered number is there. Okay, one number you have entered uh, in n. So now you are going to check the entered number is even or odd. Okay, for that, what the algorithm you are going to write. Okay, now see what you are doing. The algorithm we are writing here, uh, def parity n. So that is defining a function, the function name is parity. Okay, so there you are passing one value that is n. After that, the second step, what you are doing, if n mode to equal equal to zero, that means the condition you are writing. Okay, after that return event. If the condition is true, it will return event. Else, it will return odd. Written in Python tree. Done. So that is the steps. So to check the event number, to check an entered number is event or odd, that is one of the step. So that is some of the some steps you have defining like this. So this is an algorithm. Okay. So after that, see one another example I'm writing here. What is the algorithm for finding the greatest of three numbers? That means three numbers are there. You are going to find which is the greatest one. For this, for that, these uh, steps you can follow. This is the algorithm. See step one, start. First, you are going to start. After that, read three numbers, A, B, and C. That means you are inputting three numbers. You are entering three numbers from keyboard. Then you are checking if A greater than B, then go to step six. You are checking first two values, A and B. If A greater than B, then what to check? If A greater than B, that means A is greater than B. Okay, you are comparing three numbers, A, B, and C. So now see, if A greater than B, that means B is coming out from the competition. That means only A is left. Okay, and C you have to compare now. A with C you are going to compare. So in step six, C, it is showing if A greater than C. Print A is the greatest one and go to step eight. Step eight means end. So this is the steps. After that, see uh, if B greater than C, uh, if A greater than B is false, suppose your condition, then in the next step, what you are doing? If B greater than C, okay? So that means A greater than B, that condition is false. That means what? A is coming out from the competition, only B is left there. So now B, you are comparing with C. B greater than C, then print B and go step number eight. That means finish. If B is also uh, B is less than C, that means print C is the greatest one, and go to the step eight. End. So these are the steps you are comparing A, B, and C to find the greatest number. These steps directly you are writing what you are doing in the program, not writing your uh, your entire program. You are not writing the Python programs here, right? You are just writing the steps. So how to seek, how to find the greatest one from the three entered number. So this is the algorithm. Okay. So now flowchart also is there in your syllabus. So flowchart is the graphical representation of the solution of a problem. Okay. So now in algorithm, what you have done, you have uh, shown your program stepwise. So what you are doing in flowchart, graphically, you are going to show you stepwise uh, graphically, you are going to show the pro problem solving stepwise. So that is the flowchart. A flowchart is a type of diagram that represents a workflow of process or process. A flowchart can also be defined as a diagramic, uh, diagrammatic representation of a an algorithm. A step by step approach to solving a task. Okay, that is the flowchart. So now see, these are the symbols of flowchart. 
So the first symbol is start and end. For starting a program, you have to write this symbol. That means start. After the arrow, that means flow. So uh, arrow, uh, a line is connected, a connector that shows relationship between the representative shapes. So different different shapes are there. So it will connect by giving the error. And this shape is the input output. And the next step is the process and next step is the decision making or condition. Okay, so these are the different steps there. You have to remember these steps for which uh, and which one is used for which uh, what to use. So now I'm going to show you one program. Here see the first one start. So you are starting a program the flow chart for finding greatest among three numbers. Okay, so from the algorithm we are finding the greatest number. So here see uh, first I'm writing the first step that is start in start uh, after start what we are doing start read ABC to input so this was there this symbol was this shape was there to input and output so we are using this shape read ABC we are entering read ABC means we are entering the value of a B and C in Python program after that this shape we are using so here what we are doing we are checking we are condition we are checking for condition checking we have to use this shape in this shape what we are doing is a greater than b if a greater than b condition is true that means it will go this side it will go this side means it will check a with c a greater than c if the condition is also true then it will print a is greatest a is largest clear so now see here suppose a greater than b this condition is false b is greater than a here then it will not go to this side it will directly go to this side then it will say b is greater so it will say b with c so b is greater than c if condition is true then here it will print c is largest number or oh, yes if it is true then it will go this side b is largest number if it is false then it will go this side so like this it will this print print for print this uh, shape is used and for input also this shape is used and after that what the output you will get after that stop See, from all the shapes you are connecting to this stop. So this is the way to draw a flow chart. Okay. So after that one another flow chart I have written here. See, I've drawn, I've, I've drawn here. So flow chart is, uh, uh, flow chart to check entered number is even or odd. Okay. You, are, you have entered a number. So that number is even or odd you are going to check here using this flow chart. See what you are doing here. So start is there first. After that, we are using this shape to enter a number. After entering the number, uh, enter positive integer. One positive number you are entering. So now you are in this condition, you are checking your now entered number is positive or negative. If A greater than equal to zero, that means this is positive. If it is positive, that means condition is true. It will go this left side. If your entered number is negative, then it will go this side. It will display uh, print put input. Uh, input should be positive integer. Okay, so if it is positive, then it will come here, then it will say if a mode 2, this is the condition to check even numbers. Okay, if a mode 2 equal equal to 0, if uh, this condition is true, then it will come here, it will display that a mode 2 means it will say, suppose the value of a is 4 here, you are dividing modular division you are using here, you are dividing 4 by 2, this modular division is there, that means you will get the remainder here. What the remainder you will get here? 0. 4 divided by 2 remainder you will get 0 here. Right left side is also 0 and right side is also 0. Double is equal is there. This is the comparison operator. Okay. So about operators you are not getting in the syllabus right now. So when you will get I will tell you. So this, this is the comparison operator. You are comparing left side value with the right side value. Okay. So if both side value are same that means the condition is true. Okay. So now 4 divided by 2 remainder you will get 0. And this side is also zero condition true. It will come here. Four is even. If suppose the value of a is five here, five mod two equal equal to zero. That means five by two, you will get the remainder one here. That means one equal equal to zero condition is false. That means it will not go to this side. It will come this side. It will display given value is odd. Clear? So after that, you will uh, you have to draw the end shape. Done? So this is about the flow chart. So this one more is there. This is video code. So studio code C uh, uh, in computer science studio code is an informal high level description of the operating principle of a computer program or other algorithm 
it is uh, it uses the structural conversion uh, convention of uh, a normal programming language but is in uh, intended for human reading rather than machine reading so this is similar to algorithm so see what about you have written in algorithm see you are writing the same similar uh, things here also so you go to check whether the number is even or odd for that you are what you are writing start then print enter any number to check okay even or odd then read input a number then if number mode equal mode equal to zero the same thing you are writing just if similar to the algorithm see so this is about the c2 code so after that decomposition is also there in your uh, syllabus decomposition that means you are dividing a large program into small small parts so that you can easily uh, solve the problem okay that is about the decomposition decomposition is the process of breaking down a complex problem or system into a smaller more easily solved parts okay then uh, uh, these smaller problems are solved one after another until the bigger complex problem is solved this stage involves breaking down the problem into smaller compo uh, uh, components uh, so that they can be take tackled easily so now see some real life example also we have given here when we give someone uh, someone direction to our home our house what we are doing we are decomposing uh, the process of getting from one place to another that is city state etc so in the next example see in mathematics we can uh, decompose a number such as 256 256.37 as follows 2 into 10 to the power this that means this is the decimal number so we are using the base like that so we can write like this so this is about the decomposition some basic python programming so i'm going to start now so for basic python programming you have to know uh, how to start uh, python here so what about to do so in python you will get two modes that is one interactive mode and one script mode you will get so this is about the interactive mode and another is script mode so we are going to use this script mode now so about incorrect interactive mode even practically you are going to do then you will get automatically these things about interactive and script mode okay so this is script interactive mode means see in python if you are going to write here five then output will come five print directly you can write print five into seven so directly it will display the result 35 so one one line you can write but here in script mode you can write your entire program then you can run that program you can run that script then it will work so uh, when practically you are going to do then you will understand this thing so python data type is also there integer float and string so integer means if you are entering any decimal number and float means you are entering 4.5 6.5 like that numbers that means fractional number and string means if you are writing inside single quote or double quote any character this is known as string more than one character if you are writing okay this is about string so these three types of data types we are going to use here thanks so now i am going to show you some of the programs these basic programs i have prepared for you and this some control statements programs also i have prepared for you so all these programs i will send you on mail and you have to download at home and you have to practice okay otherwise you cannot do anything you have to practice by yourself then only you can do okay so now see for the basic program see these are some python programs i have done now before starting this program what to do you have to download python 3.7 okay so in my laptop i have downloaded and installed this ideally python 3.7.3.7 32 bit as your operating system if it is 64 bit then you just download 64 bit and if your operating system is 32 bit then download this 32 bit okay this python 3.7 download and install at home and then uh, you can run these programs so now for installation see i'm going to show you one thing if i have the software was d software software python okay this is python to uh, python 3.7.2 see this one so if you are going to install this double click here run then 
or repair modifier is coming here. So you will get install here, but one path you will get, one tick mark you have to give here. Just check that, that box, then only uh, after that you just install. Okay, just one box it will come here, one check box it will come here. You have to give tick here. Okay, uh, after that you can uh, follow the instruction next, next, then it will install. So uh, when you install Python, then the shortcut you can get in desktop like this or you will get here okay so now this this is actually i have installed python 2.7 also 3.7 also here so that is why this is for 2.7 this is for 2.7 and this is python 3.7 in my laptop so now the basic programs directly i'm going to show you see we have already discussed uh, python had uh, have two modes that is one is uh, gui mode graphical user interface mode and one is command line mode okay so here see i'm going to do a uh, script mode so script mode i have done these scripts python scripts see all these python programs extension is dot py okay like this you can save so now i'm going to run this program to run this program to show this program right click here open with ideally so if i will click here then automatically it will open in python 2.7 now i'm going to show you in python 3.7 or you can start in python 2.7 also but some programs it will work in Python 2.7, but some programs it will not work in 3.7. If the programs is working in Python 2.7, it may not work in Python 3.7. Only the print in the print option, there brackets, You if you will not give in Python 2.7, then also it will work. And in Python 3.7, if you will not give the bracket, then it will not work, okay? That is the difference. So now I'm going to show you in Python 2.7, okay? So now see, I am giving this bracket, print, opening bracket and closing bracket. If you will not give this opening bracket and closing bracket in Python 3.7, it will not work. Okay, just remember this. So now see the program, print, if you will write print here, then it will display. Just remember this thing. Print option, print function is used to display anything. If you want to display anything in the screen, output screen, then you have to write there print. Okay, so how to write print? So like this, you have to write print. After that, opening bracket and closing bracket, inside that, the statement uh, the string so what you want to display this is a string that is what you want to display the everything you have to write inside single quote or double quote i'm giving here double quote see double quote opening and closing and in the next line here i'm giving single quote so you can give single quote also or you can give double quote also both will work okay so now see uh, print correct statement it will display correct statement okay again print correct statement again this will this also it will display after that, here see in the next statement, print line slash n break. The meaning of this is if you will write slash n, that means new line. Line word will come first. After that, this break word will come in the next line. Okay. When we'll see the output up to break, you just see you just you just see these three outputs. Okay. Thus I'm going to run this program. So now you have to know how to run the program. To run the program, you have to click on this run and run module F5. Okay, you can click on here. Or from the keyboard, you can press F5. F5, okay, it will run, see. So the output is coming like this. So these are the outputs. So here, see how it is coming. Uh, print correct statement. This correct statement is coming here. Again correct statement the next correct statement is also coming here after that line slash n is giving here so if slash n is there so it will line break one uh, new line okay so now see here line is coming first after that break word is coming line break done so after that again uh, here see print correct statement triple quote if you will give, give this triple quote here triple quote here that means continuation of the first line okay this line you are writing here so if again you are writing something here like this see you're writing something here going and then here see after that again you are writing 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 so your line is too large so in that case you can use this triple code okay at the time of print statement if you write in, in triple code that means continue of this line in the next line okay so now see I'm deleting this okay so now see if we learn control s save f5 now what is coming 
see in this output correct these are coming and statement is coming so here what i'm doing if i'm pressing enter then this line is uh, coming in the next line then also it will work f5 now see statement is coming in the next line the meaning of this is if you will give triple code if you will press enter the statement is coming in the next line then also it is working but here see in this example okay in this first one or two so here suppose i am giving here press enter so will it work it will not work okay why because this single character or single code or double code is there it may be uh, statement it will display but if it is triple code then only you can write in the next line you just remember this see it is coming in black color it is coming in green color now run this program it will show error control s f5 see it is showing error okay so what to do you have to write this statement here it is work now it will work now but here if you will uh, right here then also it will work and if you press enter then also it will work that is the difference between triple code and single code or double code this is the triple code meaning of triple code okay done after that again see print line slash t b so the meaning of slash t is it will give a tab between line and tab word so line is a word and tab is a word between these two word one tab will come now see if you run this program line one tab is giving here after that this tab is coming clear so these are the basic start this is the basic starting of a program python program so actually you in this program you uh, learned about how to display statement and about the single code double code and triple code line break and slash t tab okay now go to the next program close it now go to the next program to backslash now open the ideally see uh press enter what it will come oh sorry go less f5 just what it will come see it is coming k k k k k k k k l l l so in the previous example what you have done uh here something was this correct statement in the next line okay and it was displayed in the next line if we'll not give this less that means what it will do in the output k k k k will come in the first line in the second line l l l will come clear uh wait yes f5 see k k k k is coming in the first line in the second line l l l coming right so now if i am giving this slash here that means this ll also will come in the same line clear less f5 see this ll is also coming in the same line clear so that is the difference or that is the meaning of this slash and one more thing here see name what about name name is the variable so uh, in the first video in the last video that we have already discussed there we have discussed about the variable name so this is the variable name here name is the variable name here there you can say as identifier also so we can store record or we can store data during the execution of the program so you are working on the program now that means your program is executing now so in this time so where you are going to store data so a place is required that is the variable name so name is the variable name here in the name you are storing the data that is kkkk lll clear okay now now say print name your data is there in name so now your print name name means this name you are displaying so what about there in the name it is displaying okay what is there in the name kkkk lll is there in the name so this kkkk lll is coming clear so now see one more thing if you are writing if you are displaying uh, anything here in print so in the last program what you have done you have given here single quote or double quote yes or not if you are giving this single quote or double quote this is as a statement it will come that means you are writing this name inside single quote that means name word it will come in the output control s and f5 now see this name word is coming here clear so now if you will not give this that means variable name no need to write inside single or double quote you just remember this this is the variable name so variable name is this name so if you are not giving this variable name inside single or double quote that means it will return the value of this variable name 
सो व्हाट इज द वैल्यू ऑफ दिस वेरिएबल नेम नेम के 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 एल 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 सो इन दिस आउटपुट इट विल कम के 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 एल 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 नाउ रन दिस प्रोग्राम सी के 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 एल 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 इज कमिंग क्लियर ओके डन नाउ गो टू द नेक्स्ट प्रोग्राम असाइन नंबर इन पाइथन सो हाउ टू असाइन नंबर हियर सी a is equal to print assign number so that means if you are uh, uh, writing this line print assign number so what it will come in the output this assign number line will come yes or not so just no need to see the next lines only just this line see assign number i am going to run this program f5 see this assign number is coming or not okay now again i am doing something here see that means what you are writing in the print it will come exactly Uh, assign number a c c c j j j j k k k k i am writing like this save run again see so what is there in the print option it is coming assign number a c c c k j k k k clear so what you will write in print it will not come exactly okay remove this okay assign number just i am writing this line assign number after that see a is what here you see think what about a A is the variable name here. So in this A, we are storing a value. So what is the value here? Five. So A is equal to five. I am writing here. Already we have discussed about assignment operator. Yes or not? Assignment operator is used for what? To assign any value to a variable name. So now see, A is equal to five means this five we are assigning to A. Now the value of A is five. clear so a is equal to 5 means this 5 we are assigning to a that means right side value always you are going to assign to the left side just remember this thing clearly okay so here not you are assigning a to 5 5 to a you are assigning clear now in the second line what you are doing b comma c is equal to 6 comma 7 in python you can write like this also that means the value of b is equal to 6 the value of c is equal to 7 clear like this also you can assign multiple values to multiple variable clear so now see b and c is value is uh, 6 and 7 that means b is equal to 6 c is equal to 7 clear print a b c so what it will come print you are displaying something so what you are displaying the value of a the value of b the value of c why because these are the variable names you are not writing inside single or double quote clear so if you will write here single quote or double quote then what happen it will directly display a b c only this three character run this program this a b c three character is coming clear so now if you are not giving this single quote or double quote that means it will retrieve the value of a b and c so now see what it will come 5 6 7 the value of a is 5 The value of b is six, and the value of c is seven. Okay. Now, in the next line, what I am writing? See, in this print, I am not giving this bracket. Then also, it will work. But in Python three point seven, if you are not giving this opening and closing bracket, it will not work. Just remember this. Now, see, a is equal to a. In the print, we are writing the statement also and variable name also. Clear? So a is equal to we are writing inside double quote. That means it will display a is equal comma a. That means in place of this a, what it will come? The value of a it will come. What is the value of a? Five. That means a is equal to five. The output it will come a is equal to five. Then comma b is equal to this is we are just writing as a statement b is equal to. So it is come here the value of b. That means six. So c is and c is equal to c. So it will come and c is equal to this is as a statement it will come because it is there inside double quote and the value of c it will come here. Run this program. See a is equal to five, b is equal to six, and c is equal to seven. Clear? So like this we have to display any record. So now here suppose and here I am giving b b b a c c g g g. I am writing like this. So what it will do? See the output. And B B B S S S G G clear, okay. So like this we can display rec value. Done. And I'm going to the next program now. This one, triple quote. Triple quote already we have done. Triple quote already we have done. 
okay after that we are going to do addition so i'm going to show one another program that is addition so how to add two values in python two variables in python so how to input is also showing here so how to define a function is also showing here so here actually no need to see the how to define function this i'll go i'll just um, show you it later just i'm going to show you how to add two numbers okay in function just no need to see delete and uh, first you are going to enter a number from keyboard okay okay no need to enter the numbers just i'm going to show you add two numbers delete in this program see a is the variable i'm taking here a is equal to suppose five in the next line i'm writing b is equal to six clear now see one another variable we are taking here to store record c is equal to what will store a plus b this is the arithmetic operator we are using here assignment and arithmetic operator a plus b so it will add the value of a and b and will store in c clear so what is there the value of c that is 11 5 plus 6 11 now print i am writing like this c capital a suppose i am writing a is equal to the value of a i am going to print so what to write for that a a is the variable name here the value of a is 5 here so it will come 5 here comma then i am going to display the value of b so what to write i am writing suppose like this b is equal to comma b the b's value it will come okay now c's value also we are going to display so then c is equal to comma c so that means it will display the value of c clear so now here a is equal to a b is equal to b c is equal to c so what will come here it will come 5 it is come uh, it will come 6 and it will come 7 uh, 11 5 plus 6 11 right save and run this program see a is equal to 5 b is equal to 6 and c is equal to 11 so like this we can add uh, values okay done after that i'm going to show you one another program that is swapping see so the meaning of swapping you have to know first what about swapping swapping means you are entering two values a and b's value you are entering that means the value of a is equal to 5 the value of b is equal to 6 after execution of this program it has to display the value of a is equal to 6 and the value of a b is equal to 5 that means uh, that this is known as actually swap okay so how we have done this swapping see a is equal to 5 uh, b is equal to 6 that means the value of a is 5 the value of, of b is 6 okay so now we are exchanging the value of a and b a's value we are giving to b and b's value we are giving to a for that what we are doing see here this assignment task we are doing here in this line a comma b is equal to b comma a so already you have done in the last program b comma c is equal to 6 comma 7 what is the meaning of that the b's value is 6 and c's value is 7 yes or not so here also we are doing the same thing see a is a comma b is equal to b comma a that means a is equal to b b is equal to a clear so a is equal to b means b's value we are assigning to a now again a's value we are assigning to b clear so this swapping has done so if you are going to run this program then what is coming a is 6 b is 5 clear this is swapping done after that the next program is add another program here see uh, print div duty so div duty it will come in the first line and the next line num is equal to 5 num1 is equal to 6 print sum is equal to so that means it will display sum is equal to in the next line we are displaying num plus num1 so what will display in the next line it will display 5 plus 6 11 run this program div duty will come first div duty is coming sum is coming in the next line and after that it will coming it is coming 11 11 clear num plus num1 11 is coming clear done after that the next program 
input and display numbers and string so how to enter number from keyboard till now you have done how to assign number now you are going to do how to input number right so now see <coughs> print input and display number so here uh, a is equal to int input so like this you have to write just see this line carefully a is equal to int i am writing here input enter a number the meaning of this is int means you are going to enter a number integer number you are going to store so that is why this int is there so we have already seen about the data types so different different data types are there integer float string we have to use uh, regularly so here see in this uh, program int we are going to use that means number we are entering uh, if you have to enter any number from keyboard then you have to write integer then if you are going to input anything from keyboard then you have to write this input word keyword after that enter a number this string you are writing as a comment that you have to know what you are doing you are doing what you are just displaying this line enter a number then you just you know that you have to enter a number from the keyboard okay so you are entering a number so that number it will store here in a this part you are assigning to a right so if you are assigning this part this part means what what you are doing enter a number you are entering any number from the keyboard that number you are storing into a now the value of a is that entered number okay if you are entering 5 the value of a is 5 now print you are displaying this function display function you are using here entered number is one statement just you are writing here entered number is a so what is there in a it is displaying clear so now done after that na uh, name just leave it just i'm going to show you this example first example first run this program see input and display number enter a number i'm right entering here five press enter now say entered number is five okay now this line is coming in the next statement so just uh what is your name so you are entering name that is string so string always you have to write inside single or double quote just remember this so at the time of input i am giving this single quote i am writing d w p enter so deep is coming the output so now here see you are entering string now so at the time of entering string no need to write anything just write input by default python will read as string okay so just from here we are writing no int is writing here input what is your name okay so if you will write here str then input control s f5 enter number six enter what is your name then also it will come okay so that means see if you will write str here then also it will input your name if you are not writing anything then also it will input your name that means string to input string no need to write anything then also it will uh, input as string by default okay print name that means what is there in name it is displaying okay done so now how to input uh, data and display done so at the time of display suppose i am showing you a is equal to a entered number is a if you will not write this part then also it will display it will display the value of a only right f5 c enter a number six six is coming directly six is coming so if you are writing here uh, okay. if you are writing here entered number is a then it will come in this line six is there entered number is six okay done program six has done after that this program another program is there sting input and display so how to input string so we have done in the uh, last video also so here see str input enter enter your name so you can enter like this also if you will not write string also then will then also it will work done next program type display so what of the data type it will display a is equal to 9 
the value of a is 9 here 9 is a number okay print type a so what type of data you have stored here in a so it would for display that you have to write this type function okay if you run this program see what it will come type int that means integer you are storing integer type of data okay now see in this time i am giving here single code single code now save this program now this is a character or string because double quote or single quote is there right now run this program see this time type is coming as tier right so these are the thing that you have to know save this program close this and uh, next is a uh, simple interest calculation here so here see uh, we are calculating the simple interest here. So how we are calculating the simple interest? The simple programs are C. So one variable we are taking here that is princi to store the principal amount. So principal amount is a number that is why I am writing here int input enter principal amount. Okay. Then we are entering time int input enter. Suppose this is time. Time period. Rate. Rate of interest. Enter rate of interest. rate of interest save this program si for simple interest is equal to float we are calculating in float why because your simple interest may come in point fractional number 6.5 7.5 10.5 5, like that okay uh, so so how to calculate the simple interest Prince c that means this variable into time prt by 100 so prt by 100 so your simple interest will store here in si so print simple interest is SI. So it will display the simple interest. Okay. Run this program. So you have to enter principal amount. Suppose we are entering 2000. Enter. Enter time period. Suppose two years. Enter. Rate of interest. Suppose 5%. So it is coming. Simple interest is 200. Let's calculate and see it is correct or not. After that point zero is coming. So that is why we have written their float data type. Okay. So that is the calculation of simple interest. Try to understand from here. We are entering uh, to calculate the simple interest. Already you know that we need principal amount, time period, rate of interest. So that we are entering this principal amount, time period, and rate of interest. After that, we are calculating this simple interest here. After calculation of the simple interest, we are storing the result here in SI. Then we are displaying this SI. Okay, done. After that, define a function. So how to define a function? All, uh, till now we have done the programs, uh, just normally program. So you have to know how to define a function that is user defined function. Uh, briefly you will get in uh, later uh, according to your syllabus. So here also I have done, just you can see. So see, uh, the programs you can write like this also. Your program is not starting from here now. Your program is starting from here. XC. XC is a function name, you are calling this function. When you are calling this function, then this function will execute, xc. You are calling this function, when you will call this function, then automatically this function will go to this part, okay? So briefly you will understand later actually. One function topic is there, so in that topic you will understand this properly. So to define a function, we have to write this def keyword, def xc. xc is what? This function name, xc. So inside this function, what is there? Print xyz. So when you will call this function, then it will execute this part. If you let execute this part, then it will display X, Y, Z. Run this program. So it is coming X, Y, Z output. Okay. So about this, we'll discuss later. After the define function and display details. So one another example, it is showing here to define a function. So here see, <coughs> DEF personal details. So define personal details. Name is... Uh, so here see x is equal to 5 this defined part just leave it we are starting from here x is equal to 5 the value of x is 5 print x that means the x will display 5 will display then personal details one function name function you are calling from here when you are calling this function then your this part will direct redirect to this part personal details uh, similar to that xc define Personal details. Inside this personal list, what about there? Name age equal to Simon 19. The value of name is Simon. The age is 19 here. Okay. Address is this. 
print name is this age is this address is this so this will display when you'll call this function then this part will display again print xyz will come then personal is again you are calling so again this is coming so here 5 is coming here okay after that this part will come again xyz will come after that this part will come okay now see run 5 is coming then this part is coming then xyz is coming then this part is coming again try to understand if you will not understand then also no problem in these two these two programs define uh, personal details and define xc so about this we will discuss later also so these are the basic programs uh, that we have done for you and uh, after that uh, conditional statement or control statement is there so about the conditional and control statement we will discuss in the next video these are some basic python programs that we have discussed in the next video we are going to discuss about control statement that means inside control statement if else is there and looping statement is there okay in the next video we are going to discuss about this conditional or control statement till now we have discussed about the basic python programs okay done just try to understand every programs see the base should be clear if your base is not clear then you cannot do the entire syllabus what about there in uh, uh, in your syllabus uh, your programming concept will not clear that is why always try to clear your this base part that means the basic programs you have to clear then only you can do the next program clearly okay okay the next program we will discuss about this control statement or uh, if you have any other program in the syllabus then we will discuss this so these are the basic programs that we have discussed okay thank you bye bye